So we do also maintain a nature trail behind the school. And the nice thing about nature trails is it gives a different environment for learning about nature and the outdoors. So for example, up on the trail, they can learn about decomposing logs or patterns in nature by looking at the various leaves and sticks and um, objects along the trail floor. We have lessons up there, even language arts. We have one called tree poetry, where you're just out there kind of observing, coming up with the nouns and adjectives and verbs that you know, you're inspired by, and by putting those down on paper, it becomes a poem. Hi, good morning. This is our harvest from today here at Loveland Learning Garden. This is um, everything we've literally harvested here within the last hour. Um, and what we're gonna do is take a picture of it for our records to just see how much we've harvested. We're gonna weigh everything, put it in bags, and then drive it across the street to Life um, Food Pantry. We do this several times a week. Basically, whenever we have produce for them, we take it over and donate it to them. And it's very nice just knowing that you know, potentially all of this is going to end up on somebody's table tonight. So that's a really good feeling to know that we're helping the community in that way. Um, with 10% unemployment in the United States, um, you know, this is just one little way that we can help put food on people's table. Um, and that just, that's a, that's a reason for us to get up and come here several times a week to do this. We're really excited, Cassie, to have this chance to kind of build awareness of what this program is and um, who is involved and really what we need from the community. It was about three years ago, a new group of volunteers worked together to figure out how do we take this outdoor nature education program that had a history here at the Loveland Primary and Elementary School and determine how can we sustain it successfully into the future. Um, so that group of individuals came together, have been working hard with volunteers a new leadership board, um, and we spent some time last year when we couldn't teach, unfortunately, the kids because of COVID to think about what's our mission and how are we going to be successful into the future. And that's when we chart, we decided to rebrand. Um, so it, historically, many people would be familiar with Granny's Garden School. And today we are now known as Loveland Learning Garden, Nurturing Minds in Nature. And that was really intentional. Uh, we wanted to have a clear community connection um, and speak more about our broader mission connected to fostering lifelong connections to the wonders of the natural world. Um, I have been volunteering with Loveland Learning Gardens since mid-May this year. Um, I was looking for a way to volunteer in our community. I, my husband and I live in Mainville. Um, we don't have any children. Um, but I was, I was looking for a way to help, especially during the pandemic, was kind of feeling like what can I do to help my community, but what can I do volunteer-wise that wouldn't potentially put myself or my family's health and safety at risk. And I went on volunteermatch.org, which is a website that probably hundreds of nonprofits use, um, like ours. Um, they will advertise any kind of openings. If we have a grant writing position, we need a volunteer to do that. Um, the, what I ended up work, um, signing up for was to volunteer to come out to weed, to water, to plant, to do some of those things. Um, and again, I wanted something that was safe. And this is, it's easy to be socially distanced in a garden with over 26 raised beds. We also have a nature trail in the back. Um, and regardless of what's happening with the pandemic we can be here we're going to get it ready for the kids for the school year um, and whether they end up coming in person or whether they end up having virtual classes the educators and teachers they'll still be able to use this garden so we're full steam ahead getting ready for that and i'm, I'm very excited so interesting enough i um, have a history with procter and gamble in hr and leadership development and working with organizations and I had been a volunteer um, first up at Grailville, and now uh, probably seven years ago, I was here during the summers. They called it Harvest Helpers, where we helped maintain the gardens during the summer months so that when the kids came back to school in the fall, they had a, a great learning space to be part of. So I just love fresh foods. I love the outdoors. So I had initially gotten involved that way. 
And then, again, it was about three, four years ago when this program was, um, we weren't sure about there was going to be a future of this program. And we talked to the principals and we talked to some teachers saying, is there value to this? Do you care to continue this into the future? And there was a resounding yes. This is about immersing kids in nature from a young age, connecting them to the outdoors. And research says there's so many good benefits to getting kids outdoors at a young age where you know, you're creating adults who enjoy um, that exploration and investigation of being outside, but not only that, but becoming lifelong stewards of our environment. So we're excited that we're able now partnering with the principals and staff of the Loveland Primary and Elementary School that we are able to now maintain not only this garden which has herbs and vegetables and perennials but we also own the maintenance of the nature trail behind the school and we use both of those places as the teaching spaces for outdoor learning. Now, how it works is we collaborate with subject leaders across each grade level from science, math, social studies, um, even English, and some health topics, and understand kind of what they're teaching at each grade level so that we can better align our outdoor learning with what they're doing in the classroom. So we're really trying to supplement the teachers and all the great things that they are doing. They are very innovative with what they do, so this is just kind of an extra. Um, they sign up voluntarily for classes, and bring their students out to the class, at which point our garden educators take over for the 30, 40 minutes. Um, and it can be lessons, again, that are not only science and learning about the impact of weather on plant growth or earthworms or properties of soil, um, but we also have lessons on math and social studies, like what are the productive resources in a garden or sunflower goods. So there's lots of different ways to use the garden and teach what helps the teachers, but also get kids the opportunity to do hands-on, to observe what's going and, you know, on in the garden and in the nature trail. This was perfect. It's easy to stay socially distanced at <laughs> six feet in a garden that has over 26 raised beds plus a nature trail. Um, you can come out here and some days you're by yourself and some days we've got a group like we've got today. Um, although again, we can socially distance. If Ohio went into lockdown this afternoon, we could still be here today. Um, it's just amazing to be able to harvest food, weed, water. It's relaxing, it's calm. We're getting it ready for the kids for a year of education, whether that ends up being in person or virtual. Um, either way, the garden is still gonna thrive and it's more important now than ever. The entire Loveland Learning Garden is now 100% volunteer run. And we have two amazing volunteers, uh, Melanie Simon and Reiji Kumar, who this year are co-garden managers. And everything that we do, you know, we're not botanists, we're not um, experts by any means, but we're planting and tending the garden with best practices that are pesticide free, we're, we're using our compost, and in fact this year, which is amazing, we had established a partnership with Life Food Pantry. So we grow produce here and are donating to the Life Food Pantry, and they're using their waste, composting their waste behind the Life Food Pantry, and have been bringing over their compost to our garden so that we can lay it in the beds. So everything is trying to use the real natural processes to plant seeds, uh, lay the compost, but avoid use of bug killers or weed killers, that type of thing. These three beds. That one, everything can go. This one, everything but these two plants. There's hardly anything. So it's mainly this bed. So the other day I took a shovel because this nut grass really needs to get, you gotta get underneath it. Um, so if you can try and save some of the dirt, but we don't want the roots, and it's dried out a couple days, so you might be able to get a little bit off. 
just being able to walk through here and kids and adults and not having, again, the fear of, can I touch this? Um, can I eat this? There's nothing in the garden that cannot be eaten. We don't grow anything that's like hot peppers. We don't grow anything that, um, that kids or educators or volunteers would have a negative reaction to. Um, so again, it's just, I, I can't say enough good things about it here. It's really all about fun experiences outdoors, uh, which you all can use. <laughs>